Hey everybody, it's Lucky Jack 20 from the Buffers. You're wondering, why is he in here? Well, because I realize there's nothing else we can do with Mumbo, so I'm just gonna train him out for Banjo. But yeah, this is Lucky Jack 20 from the Buffers, looking back to Let's Play Banjo Tooie. In the last episode, we did pretty much everything we can do with Mumbo, and we opened quite a few other areas in this world. So now we're gonna go out there and get and explore some cool things. First thing though, we're gonna jump over here to the big actual temple that this place is named after, but we're not gonna go in it yet. Because there's still quite a few other things we can get outside of it. Such as, if you walk over here, you'll find one of... I forget his name now, gosh. Oh well. Here's a move that's loads of fun. Now use Kazooie as a handheld gun. See fire eggs both high and low. Target Zan's temple and you can go. See, that's how you have to do them. Anyways, there you go. And he'll head out. And now, like without that, you won't be able to go into this big temple that we're walking around. But now if you walk around it, like all the way around it, the back, you'll find a treble clef node, which, I'm sorry, I was saying in the la in a couple episodes ago that these are worth 50. Uh, I was incorrect. These are actually worth 20 notes. And with that, we're actually all done with the we're actually all done with the notes now. We have all 100 in this pl in this place, so no more notes. God, if only Banjo Kazooie was that easy to get all the notes in. Anyway, when walking through here, which the golden Goliath thing kicked down, and I think everyone saw there was a white Jinjo back here. So get out of here. First, gonna get another move. Listen up to what you're told On the edges you can now hold Move along with the greatest of ease Button B to attack what you please uh, I, I, I think I can do that for every single one It's just fun to say them sometimes Anyway Jump up here and get White Ginger The cool thing about this, there's only one of them So we just get it So we're probably gonna get Jiggy just like that So let's watch this little cutscene Flying on through into there. Now here's the thing I love about Banjo Tooie. First, I was like, "Phew, I'm grateful for your help." I thought I'd never find my way home. Take this, Jean. Here's the best part: you don't have to go all the way back there. It just adds it to your total, just like that, which I think is fantastic. Saves me less backtracking and cutting and splicing the video into. First of all, you can activate this warp pad and run up here to this big old little secret chamber with another little mini temple. Now we can run up the side of it and using the grip grab hold, you see this little ridge that just kind of sticks out a bit. You can jump up and run along. Now we ever see these yellow circles, prepare the B button. And because we will just come out and peck anything that's trying to snap at you. Like so. Wait, hang on. There we go. And over here, for all that work, we get a Cheeto page. Which is nice. Alright, now we're gonna run up here. Back flip up. Jump up. Back flip up again. Alright, now. This part's a little tricky. First of all, what you're gonna wanna do is walk very slowly, like barely push the control, analog stick, whatever you wanna call it, just barely push it forward. Cause we're gonna sneak up on this sleeping snake. I don't know why I'm whispering. He can barely hear us, but he gonna hear you running if you jump on these little prickly branches. Oh well, you know, we're done. We can just run away from him. For some reason, he'll hear you if you're running and all that, but once you get the Jiggy, he, for some reason, just turns deaf. I don't know why. Who knows, maybe that Jiggy was his hearing aid, and we just do, we just completely doomed his life for the existence of silence for the rest of his life. I don't know where I was going with that. Now back behind this little hut thing, we have another Globo. Now I wonder what we're going to use it for. Well... A lot of people are wondering, wait, Banjo and Kazooie, you usually get to transform. Well, this is where we do it. We keep welcome to Little Bear and Bird. I'm Banjo and my feathered friend is Kazooie. Me, Humba Wumba, best magic person on island. Where that Mumbo was the best. 
Not true. Mumbo amateur. Mumbo best. You being global magic creatures? Here. Blech. You have global? Want to give to Humbo? Sure, why not? I want to transform into something really cool. Sure, I'll just throw it in. This little pool thing. Magic ready. Jump in Wumba pool. Alright. And thus we start transforming process. Wumba we'll just gets kicked out for some reason. And we transform into this weird thing. Wumba call this stony. Use control stick to move and press B. Run back Wumba pool want to be bare and burning. So yeah, we're now this little stony thing. There's actually quite a bit of things we can do with this. That's what, another thing I kind of like about this game. In Banjo Kazooie, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just comparing this to another game that I'm not even showing on this channel right now. I'm sorry. Anyway, there is a transformation for every single level, pretty much, which is always fun. That means every level we get to see what is he going to transform to this time. All right. All right. Now we're back out here. If you run back here, you'll see the empty honeycomb and a little passageway where Banjo, neither ba ah, Banjo nor Kazooie would be able to crawl under. So you have to use this little stony Banjo to get through. So run past Dart Thrower, Dart Shooter, whatever. Alright, keep moving. Almost. Alright, here we are. Head on down here. Now, if you try to come here earlier as Banjo Kazooie, this big tiger guy would not let you go through. But now that we're Stony, I'm Banjo the Stony. Can I come in and play? I don't know. That backpack looks kind of familiar. Oops, sorry, we kind of skipped that bit of conversation because we didn't come here as a bear and as the Banjo Kazooie. What, you think we're trying to cheat our way in? Yep, it's perfectly obvious. But they're a bit short on players, so you might as well go on in anyway. So let's us in, which is nice. So yeah, there, you have to be a stone to go in here, because this, my friends, is the Mayan Kickball Stadium that I believe uh, Specky and Jingling, they're all talking about having their big kickball tur tournament here. This is where it's going to go. This is the training area. You may consult any of the washed up player coaches for advice. Don't worry, I'm just going to share everything you need. You press B to barge, and when you're holding a ball or anything that you can kick, you press the Z button to kick it. That's pretty much it. Yellow ones will score your points right now, which is good. Two points each. Welcome to the Amateur World Championship. You may enter the quarterfinals, but I advise you take a little training downstairs first. We already did that very quickly. All right, let's walk up here to get ready for the quarterfinals. Hey, whack, who's this ugly guy? Or a new guy, whatever. May the best Stony win. And now basically you're doing soccer. That's ah, cool four-way soccer. Get out here. All right. Pretty much, it's really easy in the first part. Especially, actually, it's, it's kind of easy in all parts because you can run faster than any of these guys can. So we're just gonna kick these in. Just get a huge lead. Yeah. The first level is ridiculously easy. I don't even know why I'm showing it or if anything I could speed it up, but I'm already, I'm already commenting over it, so. There we go. One more. I'm four times higher than their. Well, now I'm almost four times, but I was four times. I was four times greater than the other bad guy who had the most points. You won your quarterfinal. Move on to the semifinals. Woo. Let's just move on. Okay, the only added thing now, and you can go down to train and they'll tell you about it, but now there are red, like, soccer balls, and those ones dock you down one point. Those shorts look stupid. Hey, you know what? Your helmet looks stupid. Man, the best don't even win. So yeah, now they're red ones. The yellow ones score two points, and the red ones make you lose a point. Try doing all that math right now very quickly in your head of how many I'll need. 
I barely, I don't even really want to, I don't like doing that type of math right now. Especially when I'm trying to play a game. Oh, well, you know, I just kicked in, I caught it. Interception, that. Once again, kind of easy in this first part. Whenever you can, like, if there's ever an opening, try and kick a red one to someone's goal, someone's goal who has pretty high. Right now, red's kind of catching up and better. Make sure he doesn't do that. Kind of a little strategy that you can learn about, which I'm probably going to be using in the next match. There can only be a certain amount of balls on screen. Like, every time you either kick or destroy one of the soccer balls. Ooh, just barely made it past that one. But every time you kick or break one of the soccer balls, another one will appear. But as long as you keep them all out on the field, then no new ones will spawn. So you can pretty much kind of take control of the match, as you'll see what I mean in this one. I've hopefully. So yeah, now we're into the big finals. So let's go. All right, Mind Kickball Finals. You have no chance of becoming champion. Oh, really? So now, no, the new thing that's been added here is bombs. If you kick them into a group of people, they'll all get stunned and kind of freeze for a couple minutes. Oh boy. All right, let's see if I can. Move, kick, go. Don't want to be losing this. Alright, now watch this. They're all just going to be following me trying to get this one yellow one because it's like their strategy to do so. And, oh, hang on, hang on. Okay. Good, good. Now watch this. I can just run around and just keep them busy. So you can do that as a strategy. Just keep them from scoring points period by distracting them with the one ball that will actually score them points so they're like designed to program to go after that one. I declare you the new Mayan kickball champion. I'm too choked up for words. <laughs> you just know he's saying that sarcastically. Alright now there is one more thing we can do as the Stony. Uh which one be closer? Uh, I think the Mumble won't be closer. Alright that one door that we kicked as the giant golden giant thing, which actually left a hole. Well, there's something cool we can do there, which we can only do as the stony, because those little weird... I don't know what you would call them. They look like stone headdresses, but those weird glowing green thing, stone things that were talking to you, like the guy who was telling you which match you'd be going to next. Not the one we were, not the ones we were playing against, but the one who basically announced you're in the semifinals now. Well, those things speak an ancient stony language, which... Ban Banjo and Kazooie would not be able to understand unless they were a stony. So, you'll see another one of them over here on your left. They look like those little stone things and they jump up. So you talk to them as the stony and he'll say, translated, To free the trapped one, the sun must rise before the moon and a star. A second moon and a second sun will then follow. Does that help? Uh, I think so. So yeah, if you were Banjo Kazooie, you, it would just look like weird symbols to him, to you. So now, you can put a new war pad there, and now over here, the switch. Now, if you, in case you don't remember, just starting from the sun, you're going to move all the way to the end and back. It's actually quite simple. And the door opens, and inside we see a weird little mole rat thingy. Hello, my little rabbit friend. Eek! Me, Alberta, was out looking for gold when that boulder fell down and trapped me in here. I suppose you expect us to move it. He, he don't mind. Yeah, well, we can't do it right now. We have to learn. We have to learn to move in another world right now. Hmm. So that's all we can do with the Stony. In fact, that's pretty much everything to do with the Stony now. Now there's only a couple more things we can do here. Man, I'm already taking like two episodes to do this one world, and we're not even gonna be able to get. We won't be able to get everything until we go to another world. Okay, so you know what? I'm going to transform here, and I'm going to meet you at the war pad right outside, you know, the entrance and exit of the world. So, uh, thank you guys for watching this this uh, episode of Banjo Tui. I'm Lucky Jack 20 from the Bot Flares. Hoping to see you guys in the next episode. Guess keep it real.